Today we'll be going over a few different option scripts that I found to be an incredibly useful addition to my option chain. Now I'll admit I didn't make any of these myself, but I did make a couple minor tweaks and I'll even show you how you can do the same here in just a minute. If you do end up finding any of these three scripts useful and you decide you want to add them to your own platform as well, just go ahead and head over to my website using the link below. From here, you're going to be able to see all of the scripts that we're going to be discussing in today's video, and you can even find the think script itself that we'll be using, or even find the shared item, which is the much easier way to load these scripts. If you want to use the script itself and just copy that and then create a custom column manually, they will be right here in these kind of gray background sections. But for right now, the simplest way is just coming up here to the shared item, which is really just this HTTP link. All we have to do to copy that is go ahead and right click on it and say copy. We'll then need to head back over to the Thinkorsim platform and then in order to load this custom script, we're going to have to come up here to the setup menu in the upper right hand corner. From there, we're going to look down below and we're going to hit the button marked open shared item. Within that little pop up window that comes up, we will simply come over here and click in the box and then just hit control V in our keyboard to paste in that link we just copied. Once that's done, we'll just come over here and hit preview. And then down below, it'll give you a little description of the script that we're loading into our platform. For you guys, you would then just come down here and hit import. And then from now on, it's going to be in your Thinkorsim platform and you'll be able to use it anytime you want. Now, once that's done, and in my case, I already have it in my platform. So I'm going to hit cancel. In order for you to access those columns, you will have to head over to the option chain. And to get to your option chain, you will simply come up here to the trade page at the very top and then make sure you have the all products tab open. From there, if we were to come down to my current option chain, if we were to look through here, we can see quite a few different expirations. But if we were to open one of these guys up, like let's say the 21 October expiration, we can now see a few of the available strikes right down the center. Coming up to the top of the option chain, you can also see a few info columns that are up here, and that's going to include the current volume for the day, as well as the open interest for each individual strike. To find and add those brand new columns that we just added, we are going to have to come up here to the layouts tab and go ahead and click on that. Then down below, we can see all of the default columns or layouts that come with Thinkorswim. But what we're going to do is come down here and select customize. That'll then open up a menu where we can see all of the columns available to us over here on the left hand side, as well as the ones that we're currently using over here on the right hand side. So in my case, you can see we are currently still using that volume and open interest. But what we want to do is come over here to the search box and start searching for the ones that we added. I believe the first one was going to be open interest versus volume. So if I type in OI, it is right here. OI slash VOL. We'll click on that and then hit add item. Coming back up to the top, the next one we're going to add is going to be the percent of the underlying. So I believe that's just going to be under percent underlying. And there it is again in the list. We'll click on it, add item. Now, finally, if we come back up here, the very last one is going to be option percent change. So we'll type in OPT. Go ahead and type in the percentage sign and there it is right down below. We'll go ahead and click on it and hit add item. So now over here on the right, we can see these brand new columns that we have added to our screen. It's going to be the volume, open interest, and then the open interest versus volume, the percent of underlying, and then the option percent change. So now in order to view them on our actual option chain, we will just come down here and hit the OK button. So now coming back up here to the top of our option chain, we can see those brand new columns have been added. And let's go ahead and go through each of them just one at a time. The first one here is going to be the open interest versus volume. And this is going to quickly show us those options which have unusual activity today. You're only going to see something appear here in this column if the volume today is at least two times greater than the open interest. So looking through here, you're going to see a lot of these columns right here have just a simple black background. There's nothing displayed in there. And that means that the volume today is not at least two times greater than the current open interest. Now, the ones that do have a background and you can see here it is a bright yellow background. That means the volume is two times greater. And then the percentage amount that displays there shows us how much greater it is than the open interest. So right here, if we were to use the $94 calls on Google as an example, we can see the current volume today is 204% greater than the open interest. Again, nothing too crazy, but it is nice to have this right off the bat. We can just quickly see the unusual options activity today, the options that are far more active than we would typically expect. The next column in the list here is going to be the percent of the underlying column. 
This one is going to show us how much premium we're going to receive or pay for this option as a percentage of the actual underlying stock. So coming back down here and staying on that $94 call, the one that we were just talking about, we can see it currently says 4%. So looking here to the right, we can see if we were to actually buy that call option, it's going to cost us roughly $434. And then if we exercised it, we would be controlling roughly $9,400 a stock because this is the $94 call. So that amount that we're paying, that premium amount of $435 is going to be roughly 4% of that $9,400. So for me personally, I found it especially useful as somebody that sells option premium quite a bit to just be able to quickly glance and see how much money I'm going to receive compared to the risk that I'm taking. It's actually going to be incredibly similar to the return on risk column or ROR, but it can also be used on the call side as you can see right here, whereas the return on risk would just say undefined. It's not going to show anything. Now, finally, the last one that we added over here on the left hand side is going to be the option percent change column. If you're using the one from my website and you haven't made any changes to it yet, it'll simply be showing you how much this option has changed in value over the past three days. I'm going to show you how to adjust that time frame that it's measuring here in just a second. But looking here at a few of these option strikes as an example, so looking here at the $94 call, we can currently see that this option is down 26% over the past three days. Now that's somewhat to be expected. Google was down $2.53 today, so of course the call options would be down as well. But if we come over here to the right and we were to look at the put options instead, we can see that the puts are also down today. Looking here at the $94 put for the 21st of October, we can see this put option is down 31% over the last three days as well. And that's even with Google going down $2.53. We can see the $95 puts are only down 24%, the $96 puts are only down 21%, and so on. I think you get the idea. Now, in order to actually change that time period, to change how far back we're measuring to calculate that actual change, we are first going to need to head back up to the Layouts tab at the very top of the option chain. We'll then come back down and open up the Customize menu once again, and then we're going to find the Option Percent Change script over here on the right, and then click that little script icon to the left of it. The little window that then pops up is going to show us the actual script itself. And what we can do down here is actually change the two closing values, which here we can see currently say three, and we can adjust that to whatever time period we want to measure. So in my case, if I were to change that to, let's say five, go ahead and delete those out of there, change this one to five as well. Now that I'm happy with that, we'll just come down here and hit OK, then hit OK one more time. Coming back up here to the option chain, we can now see the option percent change over the last five days instead of three. And here we can see the $94 calls are down 37% over the past five days. Coming over here to the right, even though the stock has moved down quite a bit over the last five days, we can also see the puts are down 25% as well. And I should specifically say the $94 puts. But hopefully you all find these as useful as I have over the years. And if you do still have questions or ideas about other indicators you'd like me to cover, just go ahead and let me know down below. In the meantime, check out this video next. I think you will find it helpful and I hope to see you all in the next one.